It's really important. I know how important my dad is to not only you, but all the children out there. <laughs> my drag at its roots is about changing things up and trying and experimenting. So in a lot of ways, you're gonna see a more evolved form of Evie than people have ever seen before. More, I think, in the fact that I tried to really have fun going into Drag Race this time. So I think people are gonna get to see like, me actually enjoying myself, not actively trying to tear my sister's heads off. <laughs> However, the thing that is going to um, be the same is, I guess, my laugh. I don't know. My laugh, my body odor. That's all, some things don't change. <laughs> oh, my incredibly out of the box creative vision. Yeah, let's go with that. My creativity. You get, to, you get to see a lot of the notes that I've been taking and a lot of the, the work I've put in over these hard however many years it's been. I learned how to sew. <laughs> Legitimately, I didn't, I didn't know how to like make outfits. I didn't know how to construct garments the last time I went on. So a lot of the things that me and my ragtag group of oddballs pieced together was more focused on making like a visual statement rather than a piece of clothing that I could wear on my body walking down a runway in. <laughs> Unlike Jujube, I, d I went directly home after my season and after I was like, I'm never gonna have to sew again, I'm going to learn how to sew. <laughs> now that it's no longer helpful and you know what? Apparently it was helpful, so I still f***ed up. My drag comes from like my rebellious teenage soul that is forever angsty and forever just wants to bat off any rules that are tossed its way. So like when I saw people being like, you need to look expensive. You should look like you care about your drag. I was like extremely butthurt because I did care about my drag. It's just, I don't, I don't care about it in the same ways that I guess other people who stress over like losing a nail do. <laughs> So like uh, all, all that really did for me was like light a fire under my angry, angsty teenage ass to just continue doing what it is that I do. Drag is, 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 believe it or not children, it's not about the money. Drag is like about whatever you have to offer to the world. And I've seen some really expensive queens with absolutely nothing to say. And vice versa. If drag loses the rebellious edge, then drag loses its integrity as an art form at all. The reason that drag exists is because queer people aren't allowed to express themselves walking down the streets. And while while that, that might be changing, the world we're in is trying for the most part. <laughs> to like advance itself and, and uh, allow space for everyone to live authentically. Like drag is the secret underground force that we have where even if you have to wear like a tie or a dress or whatever in your day life, in the nighttime, in our sacred spaces, you get to really invent who you are and live your authentic truth. And so if it's not gritty, if it's not cutting to the truth of who you are, if it's just to get you on a TV show or to wear some fancy designer then it's no better than like any of the the other trash trite stuff like you might as well just become I don't I don't even know I'm I'm just really passionately against it I don't know what you become but that's how passionate I am I just see red when I think of like drag losing any grit there I, I have no I have no purpose to live I'm done I'm done with this interview actually I'm out <laughs> <laughs> This can be a very scary road sometimes to traverse to like going from being your your local like in a bar on a Wednesday night queen to suddenly people stopping on the street and like having opinions about you based on what they saw on a TV show. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot to like process like seriously the change that happens overnight when you get onto Drag Race. So. For me, it's just these queens who have seen me, who have like looked me in my eyes and been like, I know what you're going through. 
it's okay, do it for you. And then like embrace that instead of um, buying into whatever they see on a TV show. <laughs> I don't really have like a close knit group of like Rue girls who we all go kiki down in PV with, but like. <laughs> but seriously, there is some point where almost every single queen I've met has like given me that peace of mind and, and extended their home from outside themselves and allowed me to like take up that space with them. Except for. <laughs> <laughs> My only goal after winning was to try and take as many opportunities as I could to share what I love doing with the world while my body was still capable of doing it. And I, I really just wanted to get out and see and do and touch as much as I could. Unfortunately, like that didn't that didn't always mean that I had like the easiest trajectory or that I did the biggest things, but like it just was essential for me because otherwise this is all for nothing. Like I didn't work my ass off to get onto drag race to be like, all right. I don't want to see Hungary. I mean, I still haven't been to Hungary, but like, I don't want to. <laughs> and like performing is, is my passion. So I, I really wanted to like share the gift of what had brought me joy for like nearly a decade before I wasn't capable of doing that. And that's what really powered me to do things my own way. I know how important my dad is to not only you, but all the children out there. <laughs> I know it's supposed to be the other way around. You're supposed to like have a kid and be like, become the dancer I never was. But for me, it's like, dad, take your shirt off. Dance for the kids. Do something a little gay. Just enough to give them a fantasy. <laughs> he's doing so lovely. Um, he's still, he's still, you know, thirst, thirst trap of, of, the, of the internet. He's still ready. I'm still trying to find new ways to explore uh, exploiting him. <laughs> <laughs>